Hi, I'm Tristan from Excel Data. Today we're going to walk through how Excel Data's Data Observability Cloud can spotlight workloads on Snowflake that are less than optimal. What we'll find is that as Snowflake usage ramps up, we can uncover avoidable spending caused by unreliable data and inadequate governance. That means with that with multi-dimensional data observability, Excel Data can maximize the return on your Snowflake investment and set you up for future data success. For this scenario, we're going to be a company that's had Snowflake for about two years, so enough time to see initial successes and also to start thinking about how we want to efficiently scale up as we migrate more workloads over. So over the last couple of years, we've basically seen our usage grow quite significantly, uh, first gradually and now over the last three months, quite suddenly. Most of this has to do with warehouse compute. There is some due to storage and some serverless features like auto clustering. When we break this down by warehouse, we see new warehouses proliferating, including one very clearly marked don't use that is still being used. Uh, we also see that basically there's no you know, hour of the day or day of the week when we're not generating some amount of workload on Snowflake. So this is what we like to see as a Snowflake data platform owner. This is success. We're scaling the organization. We're powering these workflows. Uh, but what starts to concern us a little bit is seeing our cumulative monthly cost continue to rise so dramatically here. Uh, so we see a pattern here. We see gradually, but it's starting to add up a little bit higher. In particular, when we view this against our contract, we see of a contract uh, that was meant to last us until the end of November, but we're already 94% of the way through it. And certainly these use cases where we've already seen success, we're gonna wanna keep funding those or wanna keep scaling those. And there's plenty more uh, on our roadmap for this year and next year that we also wanna support here. And so what we really need to do here is basically identify who's driving this usage, uh, where, if at all, there's a free lunch in terms of best practices, optimizations, controls we can apply. And then crucially, how much of the data we're working with is actually even any good. So it all starts with people. So what we'll do is break down uh, patterns of usage across our nested organizational structure. So not surprisingly, uh, our analytics group was really the first to embrace Snowflake along with IT and rap rapidly ramped. In fact, so much so that the month over month change was flagged by Excel data as anomalous as it really, uh, really grew tremendously here. We've also seen other groups, including our sales team, start to use Snowflake. And even if you go inside these to different subcomponents, of sub teams within engineering, we see, for example, our cloud ops team is starting to use it. Uh, so in all these cases, this is great to see, we're able to accommodate a lot of use cases with one platform here. However, when you have this level of rapid decentralized growth, often that goes hand in hand with some degree of waste. So what we want to do is identify uh, where, if at all, you know, there's been some bad practices here or some low hanging fruit we could clean up. We'll start off by looking at permissions. So one of the common things that happens is for new users within a group or, or subgroup to end up having elevated permissions that, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps they shouldn't have. So if we scroll through here, we actually see we have quite a few admins with elevated permissions. Uh, many of them, you know, with default warehouses that are significant without a multi-factor auth enabled here. So these are things that, you know, pretty clearly we can clean up and uh, make sure that only people that should have these permissions have them and the usage is coming where it should come from. We can also take a deeper dive into the usage itself. So we can go in and basically identify uh, these tables and these, these assets that are not being used at all. So storage isn't necessarily the headline trait, but in aggregate, this is adding up the tables that simply are, are sitting here, not being queried, that could be cleaned up uh, both to avoid confusion and reduce cost. This can really be viewed for all sorts of things, for warehouses, for views, and we even can look at drivers uh, that are out of date. So the great thing about cloud data platforms, they release new versions all the time. And uh, in this case, you know, we might have drivers that are out of date. And again, it's a free lunch for us if we know uh, what's going on to basically swap those out, get improved performance and continue along. So now what we wanna do is understand the usage at a per query level. So the interesting part of pay as you go pricing is that every query has an associated cost. And usually this is a cost worth paying. We're getting results, we can identify this and you know, our, our cost grows as our value grows. But when we have queries that cost, you know, $20 to run or even $362 to run a query, 
one thing we really want to make sure of is that the data underneath that query is good and that we're not having to rerun queries again and again and again due to bad data or, or problems there. And so one of the things that we can do now with Excel data is if we go back basically to our contract, understand you know, which of the assets underneath this are we using the most and what is their current data reliability? So here we're seeing the most used data sets in this Snowflake instance. Most of these have to do with a bike sharing in the city of Chicago, uh, as well as some weather data associated with that. And what we're seeing over here on the right is basically their current status. So are they failing data quality? Do they have the right amount of data? Is the data drifting? Is the schema correct? These are things that we can see across all our assets. And for the ones that we don't, given that we're spending money on queries for these, we may want to consider adding coverage of those, which Excel data makes very easy. So what I'm going to do is go deeper into the station status data set, one of our most using, used data sets that has a failing data quality policy. So what we're seeing here is basically we're, Excel data is assessing this on multiple dimensions of data, data quality and data reliability, looking at drift, looking at quality rules, looking at reconciliation and finding anomalies within this. So all of the things you, you expect to see around data differencing, flagging it, rules, things like this, all of these are flagged in this system. And as we go in to view data quality in a little more detail, we understand that some of the basic components that we've set up on this around looking for null checks and looking for invalid values around the number of scooters, number of docks, number of bikes, these have all broken. And so any queries that we run against this table while it's in this state, those are likely gonna need to be rerun, whether it's now or whether it's down the line when uh, our ultimate consumers viewing dashboards or viewing uh, mo using models on top of this end up noticing that the data is bad. So by catching it here, we can save a lot of cost there. But we can actually do even better because this data set is just one step in a larger pipeline. So we can zoom back out again and basically identify where this data set we were looking at sits in a larger airflow pipeline. So each one of these green boxes here is a data set. Uh, many of them are uh, staging data sets upstream, and then there are transformations along the way that take these. What we're able to see is basically the entire history of the run. This is something we're running multiple times a day to get the freshest data in. And we can see the whole history of these and understand the performance across the board. So as we go in, we can say, hey, this took longer than normal. Um, but what we can do even more importantly is identify the upstream data sets where the data initially fails. So of course, we, could, we have many pipelines here. We could see have multiple steps in them. And by finding the problem here and saying, hey, in the staging table, our data went wrong, we're able to avoid the reprocessing we'll need to do downstream as we fix the problem. So this is a story of one data set and one pipeline in a complex Snowflake data warehouse. But most of the enterprises that, that we know have hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of data assets and very little visibility into how they're used or how they're performing. So with Excel data, in addition to these cost views, I'm able to combine a view of the data reliability. So high reliability data sets along with the usage. So these are great data sets that aren't used much. And over here, we have data sets that are used quite often that have extremely poor data reliability. And so the same process that we've run to basically identify the sources of value and the sources of risk and the sources of cost in our Snowflake data warehouse, we can now very easily repeat uh, across the board in order to accomplish more with our Snowflake investments. So what we've shown today is how easily the Excel data multi-dimensional data observability platform maximizes return on your Snowflake investment by improving resource efficiency and cost value alignment, helping deliver high quality data to your organization and monitoring and analyzing performance and configuration. Thank you.